Hey everybody, so I put out a feeler on the Bledsoe Des Said So Discord, and it was mainly if anybody had any questions about Enochian. I'm trying to experiment a little bit, see what kind of questions other people have, questions maybe I can answer, maybe I can't, things that I can answer quickly, maybe I need to do a long form video. And the question that came back was actually pretty good which was, there were, well, there were several questions about it, but one of which was about the topic of balancing work life and spirituality. And it's actually a really good question because we're human beings, we only have so many hours in a day, and the way it was framed was actually pretty thoughtful too, about balancing this 3D life versus these great spiritual heights that we can reach with spirituality and, you know, all of that. So, and it's actually something I have a lot of experience with. Um, my life is relatively busy and I do try to both balance my own needs with those of my family, of my wife, the cats, all of that. And, you know, everybody has certain responsibilities. I certainly don't have as many responsibilities as, as, let's say, a president or a governor or a senator or anything like that. But nonetheless, I have my own. And at the same time, I have responsibility to all parts of myself, right? So the way I thought about it is we're human beings and we live in this three-dimensional, maybe four if you include time, world where we have so many things that we're responsible for. And yet we also exist, if you really think about it, in multiple additional dimensions, right? And I don't know how many there are. I know that for me, in my experience, that I could probably guess maybe on the order of an additional at least seven or eight, right? Some people talk about 12D consciousness or 144D and all of that. And all of that's fine. I don't really care to put a number on it because really, as soon as you put a number on it, either you're exaggerating out of ego or you're just showing what you don't know. And it's better to just say, I don't know, rather than trying to think you know something. So, but if you think about it, that those additional dimensions are all just additional dimensions, right? So those dimensions also need to be honored. And the thing that the person asked me got me thinking about was that this phrase from the Bible where... Well, I'll give the story real, really quickly. So a woman walks into a temple, I think it was, or something along those lines. I don't think it was a temple. It might have been a temple. Anyway, I don't remember. But she gives, she donates, and she donates two coins. And everybody was, not everybody, but enough people. <laughs> Their tongues were wagging. And they were talking about how she didn't really donate that much. And the truth is she had donated a lot because she was poor. And I think somebody afterward asked Jesus, and Jesus mentioned that, of course. Somebody asked Jesus then afterwards, well, how much should I give? And Jesus, he had this great indirect way of talking, which sort of led to more questions or more reflection than just giving you the answer. Okay, that's very New Testament versus Old Testament, right? Old Testament, here's the answer. Jesus Let's think about this. <laughs> Let's think of a higher principle. So anyway, he says, Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and unto God what is God's. And I thought that was interesting, because render unto, it has that sense of, well, what is due, right? What is due? What is due? What is owed to Caesar, and what is owed to God's? And clearly, you can't have one without the other, right? What's that phrase? You know, man does not live by bread alone. I will be lapsing back into, you know, just man short for humanity, because a lot of times that's just the way the quote was given. 
and I don't want to mess up the quote. I don't want to change the quote. The quote is what it is. We understand that English has evolved, and so blah, blah, blah. But, you know, a person does not live by bread alone. So in thinking about that, the real question is, it's really a question of balance, right? If you go too long without honoring the divine, honoring your divinity, honoring others, honoring all parts of yourself, there's a lot to honor as a person, right? A lot to honor. So the way to think about this is really, it's just an intense personal reflection. Taking stock, that's something that I do a lot. I, I, the reason I do that is to know, is to just a real awareness that I could be wrong about what I'm doing and adjusting. Humans, just like all organisms, we need homeostasis to a degree, right? We're always seeking that. If we're too hot, then we, we seek colder temperatures. But if we get too cold, blah, blah, blah. And then after a while, if we're neither hot nor cold, well, then we're hungry, right? Or then we're bored, or then we're this, that, or the other thing. So we're always changing. Whether we like it or not, our thoughts are being driven somewhat by biology. But also, the same thing would go for spirituality, right? Oh, it's been too long since I meditated. Guilty. <laughs> and, oh, maybe it's a good time to do this or that. So in common practice, what I found that this leads to is there's this big buildup of insight, and then sort of it goes back down. So it really does wind up being like a wave. And there, uh, what I've, in reflecting on it, I've just realized there's no really getting around that. You still should be doing the practice at whatever pace you can. Try to be consistent, but just recognize that the insights that you get or the certain special things you might be calling for are going to be are going to come at different times. I know that the angels have asked me to do a relatively big thing this coming March, this coming Easter-ish, again, in line with the counting of the Omer and the Passover and all of that. So I'll be really trying to review what I'm supposed to be doing, but also gearing up for that next year. Early next year, obviously, in a, in a few weeks. And that'll be the thing I do. But Really, it's just a matter of trying to honor all parts of yourself and taking stock of what is not being honored or worse, being actively dishonored and then undoing that. So that is my general answer to that question. Another question that came in was how often you should be sort of re-upping, almost is the phrase, or refreshing certain intentions. And that one is a little harder because if you're not doing your practice sort of by de definition, you're not honoring that part of yourself again or you're, you're neglecting it and you can't be on all the time, right? And just knowing that you sort of have limits, that's a good way to honor your humanity, but at the same time making steps to refresh that you're honoring whatever angels or whatever other people in your life, if you know, taking it you know, so, sort of taking it out of the spiritual realm, although other people are spiritual too. That's something else. So the way I've tried to thread that needle, that, another biblical phrase, you know, man can't enter the kingdom of heaven. You know, it's it's hard, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle, et cetera, et cetera. And there are d different interpretations of that. I'm not going to get into that, but it's supposed to be, the main lesson is it's hard, you know, or it's almost diff almost impossible. So to thread that needle, what I have done is I've asked the angels, the Enochian angels, to walk very closely with me. And in terms of my Buddhist practice, because again, I'm a dual practitioner, I also try to regularly do mantras and try to go through, I'm, I'm not doing a formal, uh, the phrase is ngindro, N-G-O with an umlaut over top, N-D-R-O which is basically this accumulation of mantras and prostrations. And I'm only partway through the mantras and I still have a ways. I barely scratched the surface when it comes to prostrations. That will come and there will be plenty of pride taken down a peg. And that's fine. That's exactly the whole point of it. So that's my, my goal is to do that. But 
part of that process will be, and the Buddhist practice is interesting because you're doing a lot of visualizations as this other entity. So that's sort of what I'm doing. I'm trying to both ask these other entities to be close to me, or I'm doing sort of the reverse. I'm imagining myself as this other being and thereby generating that same alignment so that it's very close to my consciousness, even if I am doing other stuff. Now, the way, the real hardcore way and the real fundamental way that Buddhism, at least the Vajrayana version of Buddhism that I practice, is to generate bodhicitta, which means that everything that you're doing, it has the intent behind it of hoping that of, of trying to have all other beings be liberated from suffering. And if you're constantly reminding yourself of that, and I'm still, I still do not have that perfected by any stretch, but if you're constantly in that state of mind, then all of a sudden you're getting into a better flow state because no matter what you're doing, whether it's mundane or quote unquote spiritual, it is always aligned with your spirituality because your intent is there. It's very different from other forms of ethics where your whether or not what you do is ethical comes down to the result, like a utilitarian point of view. And I think you do need to keep both eyes on the ball in terms of what you're trying to do and whether or not it's going to have the effect that you hope it does. So I think both of those are important. Guess what? Everything's important all the time. Everything everywhere all at once, right? So once you get that down, though, then you at least, not only is your intent good, but the, the higher intent is to make sure you're effective, which is basically a, an extension of the intent itself. But with all of that and asking whatever en other entities there are to continue to be close to you, then no part of your mundane life is ever really that far separated from your spirituality. It's just a matter of developing the concentration and attunement to that. So that's kind of my my general way of looking at it getting starting from like something that seems kind of abstract to then suddenly something relatively non-dual right that's the goal <laughs> so that you're always in that state and you realize they're never really a, the, the ultimate realization is you're never out of that state so all right so that was my quick talk and the quick talk in this case is under 13 minutes so anyway uh, i'll give you the ringo peace and love peace and love all right bye